We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we give you a special Take 5 presentation today. We have a special visitor with us, uh, that is Lisa Varga. She's going to come on and enlighten you and more about Enlighten for His Glory. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to her, and uh, she's the best to talk about her past, and more importantly, Jesus Christ and the future. Lisa, welcome to His Glory TV. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, too, and I am excited to be here. I'm excited to you know, have this platform for His Glory. So um, thank you for having me. Yes, it, it's, uh, it's, it's enlightening, um, pun intended. <laughs> uh, you want to you talk, let the audience know your background. Uh, before Lisa came on, we were talking about uh, something she's going to share about the new Hollywood. This yes. ties into, uh, I'm not sure if, if I've told you this, but our audience knows that I had a prophetic word uh, probably three or four years ago that there would be a new Hollywood. Hollywood implode. Uh, there would be much scandal, uh, pedophilia scandal, all kinds of scandal. And out of that would be a remnant of a new uh, a new Hollywood that glorifies our King and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's I, exactly what's happening. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that because uh, living there for 15 years, I can tell you um, from personal experience, it is not a good place. Um, you know, I was a little girl with a big dream to uh, be an actress. I mean, I, I can remember as young as like five, six years old, my mom asking me, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be an actress. And she said, why? And I said, because I want to change the world and people listen to actors. And, uh, you know, at that young of an age, um, you know, I believe that God had put it on my heart that this is, you know, not necessarily the path that I took. I'll get to that in a minute. Right. Um, but I, I had it in me and I knew that if I had a platform and I had a voice, I could change the world and make it a better place. That was my goal behind it. Um and when I was younger, I would go into my room and uh, this was back when they had tape recorders and I would do live shows out of my room. I had my tape recorder, line up my stuffed animals. And I mean, I would literally interview them, do these voices. And so I was always entertaining. Um, I was a, a very like introverted child, believe it or not. Um, and I would go in my room and I would write. I would write and illustrate books and I would read and I would listen to music. I was always creating. So it was something, um, you know, that God had gifted me with from a very young age. Um, so knowing this, you know, as I got older, um, I said, I am going to live my dreams and I'm going to move to Hollywood. So in my early 20s, uh, I, I decided to move out to Los Angeles and I'm from a small town in Indiana. So mm -hmm. it was your typical, you know, fresh off the bus, small town girl um, and went to Hollywood. And right off the bat, I... Uh, I got very lucky, got agents right away, um, worked on shows, movies, uh, got a modeling agent. Um, so I was very fortunate. Um, but what had happened is, you know, my background is I, I was raised in the Catholic church. So, you know, I always had faith, always knew Jesus. When I was in second grade, I wanted to be a nun. <laughs> um, so I, I just, you know, I always had Jesus in my heart. But moving to L.A. Um, made me a very different person. And you always say, well, oh, I would never do that or I can't imagine being like this. And when you are not surrounded um, by people who keep you on the right path or if you're not in church and if you're not surrounded by people, you know, who are of faith or, you know, guided by the Holy Spirit, they can easily take you down the wrong right. path. And that's what happened to me. Um so when I got there, um, you know, I started working and I was very excited, this, you know, fresh eyed girl from the Midwest and, uh, they ate me alive, chewed me up and spit me out. I mean, I, I was there, um, and I know about the me too movements because, uh, many times those type of things happened to me. I mean, it was just common for, um, you know, producers, directors, people to take advantage of you um, and to mistreat you, abuse you and use their power uh, because they know, you know, we're actresses. We have a dream and we'll do anything to get there. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's what that world is there. And um, they prey on innocent people who have a good heart and a dream 
And, um, you know, we have our own choices. I'm, I'm not saying that um, it's anybody's fault, but my own, because I wasn't strong enough. And I, I made those choices. But what that did is it made me who I am today. And it allows me to tell the story and have this testimony that I have today, um, because it ends up to be a, a very good story. And um, I found my way back to Jesus um, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't um, until I went through some horrible, horrible experiences in Hollywood. Um, you know, I, I can get into more details another time, you know, but that's basically the background of my Hollywood experience. It was great. And I thought I had, you know, the world. I mean, I was making money, going to parties, um, hanging out with celebrities and, um, you know, the who's who of Hollywood. I was right. in those circles. Um, and what I did find is those were some of the most miserable people I've ever met. They were not happy. Money and fame and power does not make you happy. And, I was just missing, um, you know, that part of my life that meant so much to me. So I went out to Hollywood with one purpose, and that was, you know, to have my platform and change the world. And it ended up being about me mm -hmm. and um, my glory, not his glory. Right. So, uh, but it needed to happen. It really needed to happen in order for me to do what I'm doing today. Um, you know, I, there's times where I look back and I say, thank you, Lord, that I'm alive today. Um, I, I got into some crazy situations there with some really bad people. Um, and it was easy to do because it's all around you. Um, so it, it's, it's sad and we absolutely need a new Hollywood, right. um, just like what you were mentioning. I mean, if we could have that, we need storytellers, we need yeah. films, we need TV shows. Um, we need positive, uplifting content. Forget everything that's happening out there right now. I mean, there's no shock value. I mean, what you see on TV and in these films, it's like, when is enough enough? So I hope, I'm sorry. I, I love a lot of people that are in Hollywood, I'm not saying I wish anything bad, but I hope Hollywood crumbles as the business part of it. And, um, you know, that it is brought, um, you know, to the ground and built back up mm -hmm. with people who care and people who have good content and positive content. And that can bring light into the world instead of all of this darkness right. um, that surrounds Hollywood. So, that's that's what the new Hollywood is. I'm I'm right on track with you, and I hope that we can get enough people together um, who think the same and who believe that we need more inspirational, positive, uplifting content out there. Um, and they're the, and they're there as we were talking about before we went on camera. There are multiple uh, multiple people that God's put me right in the middle. I had known nothing about Hollywood or movie stars <laughs> or uh, producers. Or I didn't want any part of that in uh, in the ministry, uh, but God has brought them in, and uh, it's kind of like it's it, it is a lot like the church because the reason we're doing that is for for Christ. These end days that the the church has to unite together, tighten our flanks. It's the same thing in the new Hollywood. Uh, share and do best practices. There are a lot of people, more people than people think, uh, that are like you that want to make a difference with good content in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, let's find out who they are. I mean, send messages um, because let's start building this back up again. So, you know, if there's anybody out there that feels the same way, like, you know, we need new content, we need something different, we need a new Hollywood because it is so corrupt. Right. Um, you couldn't pay me all the money in the world to go back there. I don't live there anymore. I'm done. Yeah. And I know a lot of my friends out there who are also done. Um, matter of fact, I got a uh, message this morning um, from a girl, Gail Fuller, um, who I met through Instagram, a mutual friend. And um, she is amazing and is just all about light and positivity. And she sent me this message and saw that I was going to be on your show today. Mm -hmm. And said, listen, I want to encourage you. I've got some clients and people that I work with that are in Hollywood, and they're excited to hear about this new Hollywood. So there's a, a lot more people than we think um, yes, there is. that are on the same page. So let's let's get them together and build this up. So, I mean, you are a connector. I mean, yeah, the Holy Spirit. That, it's not me. It's God. I, he's somehow put, put us right in the middle of it. And um, yeah. even people like M Mike Lindell. Um, Mike Lindell, he actually... What what was the what was the movie on uh, about Planned Parenthood? It was a Christian movie about a year ago. Anyway, he donated a oh. million dollars 
out of his pocket for that. And you're seeing more. Sean Hannity did that for uh, the Sorbos in Let There Be Light. Uh, so it's, you're seeing all these pieces and parts come together for the glory of God, and um, that's what it's all about. Can you tell us what the turning point was for you uh, that you came back to Jesus? Um, wow. Was there well, one of those? There, there were a couple of those. Okay. I think it was like, <laughs> I, it was the final one that actually made me move from LA and take a break. And I um, ended up moving to Fort Lauderdale, Florida for a while. And it was like, I just, I was in a horrible relationship with someone. Um, my career was crumbling, um, made a really bad choice that got me into an awful position. And it was that moment where I just was brought to my knees and so broken and didn't know where to go, what to do. Um, I actually did get connected with a church out there, and it was called the Word Center Church. And um, I loved it. Was Pastor uh, Marveen and Pastor Allen? They were a husband and wife, and um, it was in Compton. So my mom, who was a prayer warrior and like brought us all uh, back to Jesus um, through her prayer of a oh. loving mother, um, oh, yeah. I'm going to this church in Compton because one of her friends said, oh, you have to try this church. My sister goes there. So my mom came to visit me in L.A. And, you know, we're driving and I'm like, "Ooh, I don't know if we're lost because, you know, look, sorry, <laughs> I, I looked a little out of place there. Right. But I got to <laughs> tell you, I walked into this church. And it's like everybody stopped and they turned around like, are you guys lost? But they welcomed us with open arms. Amen. They were so loving. And that was the first church I had been to that was filled with the Holy Spirit because oh, yeah. I was raised in a Catholic church. Yep. Um, you know, later I, I, I now say I'm a Christian because it's more about a relationship than a religion to Amen. me. Um, but I walk into this church and I'm talking, I mean, goosebumps from head to toe. The, Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit. they're singing. I mean, I'm in tears and I don't know why I'm crying. I'm like, what is this place? So they were the ones that really got me back on track and prayed for me and helped me, um, you know, through a really difficult time. Um, so God blessed me and he did plant people along the way. I just had to open my eyes and, and find them and follow his lead instead of following the path that I was going down. Um, but it was at that time where enough was enough. I had, I had had one bad thing after another, after another, and so broken and, um, not sure that I'm quite ready to talk about it yet, but it was yeah. a, a it was a really bad experience for me, um, and so I decided to take a little break. And my brother was living in Fort Lauderdale, and he said, "You know, come on and and visit here." And I got connected with the best church there, mm. um, and the best friends. And my brother was there. It was a breath of fresh air, and I rededicated my life to Christ. You know, went up and did the whole altar call. I'm like, mm. "All right, I'm going to prove myself and go up and you know lay it all on the line." And um, you know. And I rekindled my love for Jesus and uh, was just stronger than ever in the word. Um, and I, I got back on track. So I got back on the right path and it was amazing. Um, and while I was in Fort Lauderdale, uh, this was in 2009, I uh, found out that my brother had Hodgkin's lymphoma. So he was diagnosed with cancer. He's doing great today, by the way. That's a whole other God story in itself. Um, but back in 2009, you know, and I was still involved in the entertainment business. Um, this was in Florida, though, doing a lot of work in Miami. And it was a much different business there. So I, I still, you know, kept doing what I love doing. Um, but I got this information about my brother and I ended up leaving my whole entire career behind. I just, I stopped everything. And um, he is a two-time survivor. He went through chemo, radiation. Um, he was in remission for a year and then it came back again. And then uh, he had to have a stem cell transplant. They gave him a 50-50 chance of living. And I just said, you know, I, I had a great life so far in LA, but I'm done. I, I need to be here for my family. And I literally gave up my whole entire career um, up until... Uh, probably about five years ago. Wow. And um, then I started my own production company, moved back home to be closer to my family. And I said, I, this is still in me. I still have to be a storyteller. I still have to produce and write and act and do everything that I love. So I did start my own production company um, and I produced some films. Um, I've created my own shows. So it, it never stopped me from the path that God had put me on. I just got back on the right path. Um, 
But leaving LA, never going back there and giving up my career for a while uh, was the best thing that I could have ever done because it helped me grow that much more um, spiritually, you know, mentally, everything that I needed because my values had kind of been removed for a while living in Hollywood that was so superficial for so long. Yeah. So um, God blessed me again and opened my eyes to what truly makes me happy. And now all of the projects I work on, everything I do shines that light on everything. So all the projects are about um, positivity. And, you know, not everything has to be, you know, rainbows, puppies, kittens. Um, right. There are some tragic things that have to happen in order to tell a good story. So when we create this new Hollywood, I'm not saying they have to be bubblegum movies every day. I mean, there's we have to tell the stories about the truth and what really happens in and life. And that's raw. So, yeah, I'm excited to do that and be a part of that. Yeah, because the, tr the true, the true, I wouldn't say this all the time, but the true moments of our lives is when you go through the trials and tribulations and you have mm -hmm. a choice. Yeah, are you going to get on your knees and, and ask the Lord to come into you and guide you or are you going to continue to rebel? And it's that moment that we repent and do that. So the trials are, are to build us. And uh, for his ultimate purpose and his ultimate glory. Yeah, I, I hate to say, but being broken is the best place you can be in life sometimes. Yes, I mean, it, it doesn't feel good at the time, but the after effect of it, when you come out and, and I don't know how people get through life without um, faith and without God and without Jesus in their life, because I certainly, um, honestly, I don't know if I'd be here today if it wasn't for him. Um, and just surrounding me with love, unconditional love every day of my life and um, being so connected to him that he never allowed me to um, get too far away from him. Um, he saved me every time. When I look back, he always provided a way out, always. Yeah, and he always. always does. Yes, he does. So. And you look at those, those, those horrible times. Uh, those were the key points of your life that he turned you. And that's yeah. what people want to hear. They want to hear the real truth. You know, there's this misconception yeah. that the that the church has taught for years that you become a Christian and you sit in this gold pew and everything's perfect and your life is going to be perfect and no if you're in, if you're doing it for Christ's glory you're going to be attacked and we need to well, yeah. we need to be aware of that absolutely it is wrong. I'm sure after this I'll get attacked by people who are anti-christian and you know anti-church and anti-god um <laughs> you well know, you'll even don't... you'll even get attacked like I get attacked all the time by the so-called church because they don't like how we church. We are the yeah. church. It's not in a building. We are the church. Yeah. It's wherever people are going to listen because the world is so different right now. Um, you know, they won't even let people go to church at this point. So That's right. uh, what do you do? So a program like yours is wonderful because yeah. it's you can hear what you need to hear right here. If they right. won't let us in the door, we'll, we'll go on the internet. Fine. Yep. And <laughs> we'll find a way. Doing. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. That's why God built His Glory TV. It was you know we do it through guests and we do it through our daily Take Five news show. Yeah. But they're going into our Bible studies. We're seeing them just they want to get in the Word. They want to know more about the Living Christ. And yeah. uh, when they do that, things change. You mentioned that specifically. You said once you start getting the Word, that is when things start to change. Oh, absolutely. And you have to stay in the Word. And you know we all have busy lives. I do too. And I'll, I'll be honest when I say I am not in the word every single day, you know, doing Bible studies like I should be. But there's never a day that has gone by. I have a little, I have actually two devotionals, um, you know, on my nightstand before I go to bed. If I haven't, you know, done a Bible study or, you know, connected with God in some way, I at least have that. And they're two different devotionals and they've got scripture verses, um, you know, so I have to have that in my life every day. And I love to be surrounded by like-minded people, yeah. um, you know, who encourage me and build me up because you have to have that. And right. don't get me wrong. I've got friends who are non-believers. I've got friends who are every walk of life, um, you know, so did Jesus. That's right. Um, so I do not judge anybody. Um, my gosh, my story, uh, the things that I did and the choices that I made, and I was a Christian at the time. I mean, you know, I look back and I, I'm ashamed and embarrassed, but I guess I shouldn't think that because, you know, we all make choices that are bad. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody's perfect. Right. Um, so, you know, when I have other people in my life and they don't see what I see or they don't have faith, um, I know that my job is to be a light in the world. 
And my job is to be an example of Jesus' love. Mm -hmm. So when people see me and they're like, what is, what's different about you? Or there's something about you. I don't know what it is. And um, if they ask me, I offer it to them. And I say, well, you know, that's the Jesus inside me that you see. Right. It, it's, it has nothing to do with me. Um, and so I love that part of it. If there's someone, um, you know, that's not a believer that doesn't know Christ, um, it's, it's an honor to be able to open that door and, um, introduce him to them. And if they accept it, great. I'll, I'll share more. And if not, then you know what? It's not the right time. Right. Where to plant um, seeds. I, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I, I, you know, planting seeds every day. And, um, like I said, I judge no one. I love everyone. I accept everyone. I actually even pray for people who we probably are despising today. Right. Um, they need prayer more than ever. Yeah. All, all the tragedy that's going on in the world, um, all the violence, the anger, the hatred, my heart breaks for the people that are out there doing stupid things um, because what happened to them right. to make them do what they're doing? I just, my gosh, how horrific must their lives have been or what happened to them to make them disrespect human life and everything around them so much that they're just like not even a human being. You want to? Um, do you want to touch on that? I, I, you know, I don't want to pro probe you to go yep. too deep. Um, wherever you feel led by the Holy Spirit or comfor comfortable, yep. about your experience with all the you know the stuff that we're now seeing coming out about Hollywood. Did you see that yeah. when you were uh, there? Oh, yes, I, I had a manager at my modeling agency. Um, who basically was sending me off to be trafficked to another country. And I didn't realize that's what it was. He said, um, you know, he, he made some advances toward me and was very inappropriate. Um, and he said, listen, I've got this great job for you. Um, you'll make $150,000. We're going to send you to another country with a bunch of different, you know, models and um, actors and musicians, and you'll come back with jewelry, and it's great. Everybody's doing it, um, you know. And at this point, he made it sound like it's a wonderful place, and oh, there's going to be entertainers there, and we're going to a palace. And sure enough, you know, I'm packing my bags ready to go. I actually had an audition and booked this job, and it was the same time that I was supposed to go on that trip to my new modeling job. <laughs> um, and the director said, oh, you know, what did you book? And I told him and he said, you're not going. Do you know what that is? And that was my first experience in what tra trafficking is. Wow. I mean, I, I, I couldn't I, if I would have went, who knows? I probably wouldn't have come back. That's right. Um, but that a lot of things like that. Oh, directors, producers, you know, you got to sleep with me to get this part. Or if you do this or if you do that. Um, you know, I'll introduce you to this person or come to this party. Um, it, it was daily. I mean, if you're, you know, and now it's guys and girls, but it's like, if you were a young, attractive, you know, 20 something in Hollywood, you were fair game for anyone and anything. It, it was terrible. I saw it every day. Um, it happened to me personally, happened to friend. It actually happened to, um, some guys that I knew mm -hmm. with other guys. I've heard that. Um, yeah, one, and the one guy, they messed with the wrong person because um, it, it's a very famous person who did this to him. I, I don't know if I should say the name or not because I don't know legally if I can, but um, it's somebody we've heard in the headlines um, who's a known pedophile and, you know, under the <laughs> the radar right now. Yeah. Um, and, and going back to that, uh, how you and I met is from right. Craig Sawyer, Craig right. Sawman Sawyer. Um, who is doing incredible work in um, anti-trafficking. Um, he has, uh, it's called V4CR, Vets for Child Rescue. He's got a movie called Contraland. Um, if you go contralandmovie.com, you can watch the movie for free. Um, look up Craig Sawman Sawyer, and uh, you will see this is one of you don't want to mess with this guy he's no. a former navy seal i mean marine yep. he just he's he's not somebody that i would want to be on the other side of <laughs> um but he is on a mission to stop child trafficking which i think is one of the most horrific things that anybody could it's just pure evil mm -hmm. and it happens every day in our own backyards we don't even realize it 
um, and it has to stop. Right. Um, and I, I know quite a few friends who um, have a platform who uh, my friend, the Veritas machine, if you go on Instagram. And again, these are my friends who, you know, it, some of the contents out there and be prepared, but they are outing everybody. Yeah. Um, and they need protection. They need prayer because what they're doing is right. They need to out everybody. They right. need to name names. They need to put an end to this. And not a lot of people are willing to do that. They're afraid. They fear for their life with good reason. They're Literally. threatened yep. every day. Craig himself, I can only imagine what he goes through, but that man is doing great things. So, um, you know, follow him, follow his journey, what he's doing, donate to um, V4CR. He needs all the help he can get to stop this. He's doing something about it. Yep, so it if it makes you sick to your stomach to hear these stories about these children who are um, being trafficked and sex sexually abused, it's just awful. If you want to stop it, these are the people who are doing yeah. it. So support them. And, and another them. is uh, somebody that Craig has teamed up with who was on his Glory TV last week, Yako Boyens. Uh, he's, he's, he was one of the very first to uh, expose this. And he was on last week, and he, he, he touched on something that you, ju you just said that is so striking that the, you know, the United States of America doesn't realize that human uh, trafficking of women or whatever is not just a, gra a snatch and grab little child. It could be exactly what happened to you there's yep. multiple ways they do it right before it right right in front of us yeah you're lied to they tell you everything you want to hear and once you're there you're done they drug you they um you know do horrible things they abuse you i mean thank god that never happened to me and i didn't go but i mean uh, who knows um you know i've, I've heard horrible stories um, you know, some, somebody here in my small town in Indiana, uh, a friend said, um, his daughter was approached by somebody on the phone, sending her text messages to meet him at a park. And the father was like, where are you going? And she told him, and this, I mean, this guy was going to probably kidnap her and do God knows what. So it can happen wherever you are. And you don't know, they'll, they're these predators that were, pre they pretend they're your friends. Um, and they prey on the insecure. Mm -hmm. um, they prey on, you know, people who foster children, mm -hmm. um, people who are hurting and who they know are easy targets. That's why, you know, I'm a nice person, but I will stand up any day for the innocent. You, you mess with children, yeah. animals, Yep. elderly people who can't defend themselves um, nice Lisa turns into a different Lisa and you know that's always been in me it's like I am a protector by nature um, I love everyone but that also means if you hurt someone that uh, is innocent um, if I can't do it I'll call my friends like Craig <laughs> yeah, Craig, Craig, Craig and his team oh, yeah <laughs> well you call an even more stronger than Craig and Craig will be the first one to admit Yes, uh, yes. You know what? I, true. We are going to call on the name of Jesus, yes. and I, I do pray daily for that. But he puts people like Craig yep. and the other warriors that are here right now um, to do that work for him. So, And I know Craig is you know, a Christian, and um, his faith is great, so we need to continue to just you know, pray for him, support him, and people like him. I know there's a lot of people, and praise God to those people, and you know, let's support them however we can. And, I, and I know terrible. personally, I, we, I shared a little bit before we came on that, uh, about Craig. Uh, people, I know he's under a severe attack, some false allegations coming against him. Oh. Um, it's not good. Uh, but when, yeah. you're, when, you're doing, when you're doing things uh, for Christ and when you're doing things to help children, you're going to get attacked. Absolutely. And, uh, um, yeah, it, and I'm it, sure they're going to try and, you know, say whatever he's doing is not right or false information about him. Um, you know, I know him personally. That's the most stand-up guy you will ever know. The, it, go to the source. Yeah. Who's saying the things about him is what you need to find out. And that's then so go look them up yeah. um, is what I would say. And, you know, that's another thing today. You know, you talk about the mainstream media and how can you literally watch one news station and it says this and another news station and it says this, there can't be two different worlds going on here. Um, so I, I can't even turn on my TV anymore no. because of the lies. Um, I'm so disappointed in journalists today to be able to just read something off of a teleprompter, whether they, and I know journalists personally who are afraid to lose their job and they're just reading off of a teleprompter, yeah. whatever they're told. Right. Um, and nothing but lies and fear. 
uh, and confusion. And you know what? There's a lot of good things going on in the world right now. That's it right. is not all bad. It, it's actually quite the opposite, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Um, everyone I know is positive, um, loving, kind. What we're seeing on TV is it's it's happening, um, but it's not reality. It's what they want us to believe in what they want us to see because there are good people in the world and there are wonderful things happening right now. Um, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do is share those stories and tell those stories because we're flooded with darkness right now. And the only way to cancel that out is to bring more light into the world. The brighter it gets, the lighter it gets, the darkness goes away. So that ties right, ties right into enlighten. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Tell us about Enlighten. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing all the talking. The, the, my audience, doing... they hear from me all the time. They're tired of hearing from me. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't want to be one of those people that have guests on and then you ask the question and you tell your whole story and it's all about me. It's not about me. It's about his glory and Enlighten. So don't feel well, bad. Thank you for we, we'd rather allowing... have you talk. Well, you're you're creating a platform um, for people to share their stories mm-hmm. and things like this. So um, well done to you. And thank you for providing this for people to, you know, speak and share good, positive things. Um, Enlighten started um, from an incident where I was uh, not too long ago supposed to be uh, on a show. Can't talk a lot about it legally, um, but all I can say is I was not treated well by a a certain network and um, they did the right thing. And that being said, um, I ended up not getting this job. Mm -hmm. And again, I was broken and I'm like, Lord, I thought that was my platform. This was going to be a way for me to, you know, share about charities and things that are happening in the world. I mean, this, this was it for me. And I mean, up until the last, like a week before it aired, like this happened, I was devastated. And I thought, wait a minute, what, this is not what's supposed to be happening right now. Um, and because of it, God gave me this vision and this word, and it was enlighten. And it was specifically written a certain way, and it was lowercase e, lowercase n, all capital letters, L-I-G-H-T, lowercase e, lowercase n. Um, And it stands for everyone needs light, especially now. Mm -hmm. And so that was the name of the show. Um, And I said, this show is going to be all about positivity. Um, It it has to be inspirational, motivational, educational, and I want to bring light to the world. And I wanted to have guests that had um, really positive, impactful stories to tell. They could be funny stories, you know, sad stories that turn good, inspirational stories, but it had to bring light into the world. And so I had all these guests lined up and I'm ready to launch and a week before COVID hits. (laughs) And, you know, everybody knows what's happening now, like no live events, um, no shows. It's just, you know, so again, I had to take a step back and say, all right, now what do I do? So it's been this constant uphill battle, but I am not giving up because I know the Lord gave that to me. So, you know, maybe the new Hollywood is what this is. Um, but the bigger picture is no matter what I do, I, I have to shine light into the world and I want it to be positive and I, I want more of that. So that's what my job is, you know, starting off as a little girl, knowing, you know, this was the road I wanted to take and knew that I had to take um, going in a little bit of a different direction and, and taking a few little side turns here and there, but I'm back on track. And I know that I am, you know, I'm a storyteller yeah, yeah, and man. I'm a creator. Um, you know, I love being in front of the camera and behind the camera both. So uh, whatever is going to happen next, um, that's for the Lord to decide because he's laying everything out. I'm just, I'm on autopilot. Amen. Um, every day I just, <clears throat> I connect with the Holy Spirit. I'm like, you're the boss. Where am I going today? Sometimes yeah. I just show up. And sometimes that's all we need to do. God will do the rest. And that's how we connected. It was through the Holy Spirit. Um, it yes. was it, it yeah. was a very uh, it was a different way. I I I don't know how it happened, but the, I know the Holy Spirit. I, I do. It, it's so funny. Like I look at social media, and social media is just people spewing out like anger and negativity. So I mean, I I rarely get on there, but there's some good to it also because it is a platform, and mm-hmm. you can. Um, 
you know, talk about things and there's, you know, good things that are happening also. But I um, had Craig is on there, Sawyer, and he somebody had posted something and there was like a charity for children. And, you know, when you scroll and you're looking at who's following who, I saw his glory on there. And I ended up following you and we connected that way. And it's amazing that social media, you know, was the connector, you know, now, and you and I had this discussion and you said, you know, the Holy Spirit had led you and I'm all about that. I mean, I'm spirit led every day. And if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit and to those of you who, you know, don't know, well, what do you mean by the Holy Spirit? It's that gut feeling you have inside Mm -hmm. and you're like, Ooh, I shouldn't do that. Or I shouldn't go there or the opposite. Like, Ooh, I need to do that. Or I need to go there. That to me, that's the Holy Spirit. It's that voice inside of you. Amen. And when you listen to that, um, amazing things happen, miraculous things happen. If you don't listen to that, you're going to take some, you know, side turns that may not. Yeah, be, and it, it'll get you off track. The, the, <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit's the guider. So the Holy Spirit gu- guided. And I, when I when we talked on the phone, I said the Holy Spirit guided this whole process. Yeah. But I was telling you off camera. I don't know if it was when we talked on the phone or email or text uh, the last couple of days. It never really dawned on me until I was, I was talking to a rabbi in Israel. And he's going really deep into the Hebrew word kabod or kavod. That is the Hebrew word that the, the name of our ministry came from. It literally means his glory. It means the glory of God, his shekinah, his, his literal essence. He told us that 10 years ago. So this rabbi, yeah, I knew that. So uh, the, the rabbi is going deeper and deeper in there. And I'm kind of half paying attention because the rabbis can go really, really deep. And he said, yes, and it also means to enlighten. And I was like, what? I remember you saying that, yes. He said, no, it goes deeper in just his glory. It is his essence, his light, his enlighten the world because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the light. He is the light of the world. So it's amazing. So see, it was meant to, timing is everything. God's timing is so perfect. Even a so rabbi in Israel confirmed it. I got goosebumps yeah. when I just told that story again from the Holy Spirit because yeah. it was one of those I got you moments with a rabbi. I was like, this was like two days after I talked to you. I was like, this can't be a coincidence. I, As, and I remember you saying that too. It's like, it, it just hit me. I'm like, oh, that's right. It means enlightened too. I knew it meant his glory, but um, And th- right. they've explained this. I'm, I'm part Jewish. I'm from the tribe of Judah. So people have explained this to me so many times, that word over the years, but never yeah. did any rabbi go that deep and use that language before. And uh, I love it. It was amazing. Yeah, so Absolutely amazing. Because so there you We're on track. The, the, the two <laughs> words literally mean the same thing. Him. Wow. The light. He is light. He is. Yeah. He, the darkness is in the world. The darkness that's in the world is just because they're absence from his light. If they mm-hmm. allow him in, there will be no more darkness. He will be the light. Right. We need to turn the floodlights on. I mean, like j- light should be anyone who is a believer, who has faith, who wants the world to be a better place right now. Turn on your lights. Shine them brighter than ever. Connect with people who are doing um, the same type of thing and support them. Um you know, it's, we're on a mission here. Hey, we sure are. I feel, you know, there is a line drawn between good and evil right now. And I see this so clearly that um, there's people that are just so full of hate and anger and darkness, but on the other side, there's so much light and yeah. beauty and love and compassion and empathy. And it's like, and I see that. Um So there's this dividing, like there's so much division right now right. in the world and it's heartbreaking. Um, it it needs to stop. It's like, if people only understood, like, just stop for a second, take a step back and just, and, and take a minute to like, think about what you're doing. And, but I guess those people are so lost and so consumed in the darkness. Um, they can't find their way out. Right. And that's, what's so sad. So if we shine our light so bright, maybe they will see that little beacon of light and say, what is that? I need, I'm going to go to that. Right. Let me go towards that. There's I need more of no that. question we're in the end days, uh, as the scripture yeah. tells us, because that, that is what Jesus said to the last church, the church of Laodicea. Uh, they, they, were neither, they were neither hot nor cold. They were lukewarm. Uh, and that's what he's saying to the world. There, you can't be in the middle anymore. There's no sitting on the fence. You're either all in for light or you're all in, in darkness based on what you choose with your heart. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And I choose light. <laughs> I choose light too, but it takes yep. it takes a seed in some cases. It takes uh, it takes a, a, a tragic event in one's life to, because we're programmed as part of Hollywood programming and channeling, as Mike Smith used to say all the time. Um, we got to break that channel. We got to break that coding so that we are we're, we're touching him with our heart, right. and that's where the word is so important. You mentioned yeah. it. You nailed it. Uh, so many people ask me as a pastor, how, but you're a pastor. You, you know God. The only reason I know God is because I get into the Bible. And I know what day of the week that I don't get in the Bible. It's the Shabbat. And that's when I get my most attacks. So there's a theme here. Yeah. Satan doesn't Absolutely. want you to know the word of God because that is him. No. And the more you get into him, the more he reveals himself. And then you're connected yeah. and you build, you build the gifts of the spirit. You build that bondage uh, yeah. This Good morning, bondage. even like you and you're right, you have to stay in the word. You have to stay connected. And, um, you know, for the last two days, I have had the worst migraine. So I'm like, all right, the enemy's trying to attack me and, and it's just not going to happen. I mean, so I knew because I was supposed to come on your show today, um, you know, something would come up. And yep. I mean, I couldn't even get out of bed yesterday. Um, so it was, you know. You just have to know what's coming, and you have to put on your full armor of God sure every day. Um, if you do not know what the full armor of God is, it's in the Bible, and it is your um, armor that you need to wear to fight off everything that will come your way once you walk out the door. Actually, before you even walk out the door, before your feet even touch the floor getting out of bed in the morning, put on your full armor of God because we need it now more than ever, um, Amen. you know, and it's, it's the word of God, um, stay in the word, stay connected with people, um, who hold you accountable, uh, go to Bible studies. You have Bible studies, yep. right? Or yep, we on do. your we, website. We do. We have over, oh boy, I think we have over 3000 teachings. We have the entire Bible word for word that we walk, we walk people through. Wow. Yep. So many people That's are coming amazing. in uh, from all over the world to read our Bible studies, um, yeah. They can get our app and they can change it to the language that they're in in a foreign country. We reach 5 million people in Muslim countries alone. And there's wow. just countless uh, numbers of, of, of Muslims coming in to know Christ through his glory. And it's all for through, your Bible studies? through Bible studies, wanting to know truly who the Christ is. Because in Islam, they do teach them uh, what, who, it, uh, who Jesus is, but they call him a prophet, not the son of God. And that's why the Lord, a couple years ago, had me study the Quran inside, outside, upside down. Because when you bring and you try to uh, put a seed into somebody, you've got to speak to them from their language. Uh, so yeah. if it's a, somebody that's Muslim, you can't say, well, just read the Bible because they're told not to read the Bible. But if you can show them Christ in the Quran, that's a whole different story. The Christ, the living Christ. And that's to the audience as well. Because we are, we're, we're called to be seed planters, and we need to be able to speak to people on their terms so that they understand yeah. it. That's uh, amazing that you do that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been an absolute blessing. We had somebody, uh, we've had two imams that have uh, come to Christ as well, which is the equivalent, in, for those who don't know, in Islam, of, of a high-ranking pastor. Uh, so amazing, amazing what God is doing. He's, he's, the light Incredible. is shining all over the world. We see all the stuff that's happening negative in the United States, but we don't see what God is doing in the underground church in China or Iran. Yes, they're getting persecuted, but they're growing. It's just massive growth. Wow. Exciting that's times. great. Exciting Good. times. Yeah, we need those people. We need resources like you have, um, you know, shows like you have, and, you know, surround yourself. I have some prayer warriors in my life um, that I don't know what I would do without them. Um, there's an organization here where I live, and it's called Heroes Camp. Um, if, to find out about it, just go to heroescamp.com. They basically, they father the fatherless. They are taking, like, ugh, these children, and uh, it's all ages, actually, but it's the kids who are come from these horrible homes or, you know, just terrible situations and it's heartbreaking and they, um, it's a basketball camp. So they come and they play basketball, they get some exercise and they, part of the program, whether they're a believer or not, is they have to do a Bible study no. before they eat and they get a home cooked meal. Um, so Pat and BJ Magley are the co-founders. Pat runs, I mean, it, he is wow. Talk about a prayer warrior. Um, I, I lean on them for, a lot. And, um, you know, and she cooks all the meals for the kids and she's got something called 
Kate's Kitchen. I mean, just the most incredible, amazing couple. And they're doing incredible work for the Lord, for the community. Um, but when I, you know, when I don't know what to pray for, or when I need help, they're the first people I call. I'm like, yeah. help me. And they will pray. I mean, and they speaking in tongues and pray. I mean, prayer warriors, Holy Spirit, like all over the place. Amen. Um, so yeah, love them, love Heroes Camp. And then um there's a uh young man in Africa, in Kenya, mm. and his name is Freddie. And uh when I was living in Florida, I had sponsored um he lived in an orphanage. And I had, uh, you know, gotten him computers and books for school. And he grew up to be this incredible young man who now works at a hotel in Kenya. He's doing well. He has a family of his own. He lost both of his parents um, to AIDS, I believe. Um, so he was in an orphanage. And this young man, all the way from Africa, um, will we'll go on WhatsApp or Facebook. Um, and he has prayed with me. And people in different countries. like. Amazing. <laughs> We're very spoiled here right. in the United States, and we yeah. don't know what it is to want or go hungry, yeah. but they have stronger faith than anyone I know. And his prayers are the most beautiful prayers. And I just, I'm like, pray with me today. I mean, all the way from Africa. So, I mean, I've got, I got people in my corner who, you know. Speaking who of Kenya, uh, I've never told you this, but we have, we have four His Glory Kenya churches. And we have an orphanage there that we provide uh, for the children. And we have a cow called uh, Glory the Cow that gives the, the kids uh, fresh milk every day. We're putting a brand new well in there. We have a, His Glory Liberia as well. And the only reason I bring those two up is you said something very fascinating that I think the audience needs to, hit, hit the, to touch on. You said you were led by, by your mother, a prayer warrior, to go into a African-American church in Compton. We need to realize that loving Jesus Christ has nothing to do with the color of our skin. It's the color of our blood. It's scarlet red, and we need a Savior to wash that sin away. And when you go in, there is not a better praise and better filled with the Spirit than a true uh, African-American uh, service that is filled with the Lord. In, in, they're not African-American, but uh, in Africa. Uh, yeah. In Kenya and Liberia, they'll actually do cartwheels and somersaults to go up and give their tithing. They just they, they love sing, God. They sing, they dance, and like I said, you something will come over your body. You're just you. I cry every yes, time. Amen. It it just overtakes you and consumes you with the Holy Spirit. And I mean, they're so connected because they probably don't have the distractions nope. that we have. Also nope. in Kenya, right. I mean, they are they're focused. Um, you know, and even like in the Old Testament. I mean, they didn't have TV. They weren't distracted. They prayed. That's why miracles happened every day yeah. because they were in the word. They trusted the Lord. That's all they had. So when you go to these third world countries and other countries like Africa where there's a lot of poverty, they rely on the Lord for everything and they don't have the luxuries we have. So they have such a pure form of worship. It's like nothing we've ever seen or nothing. experienced. It's incredible. Some of those churches we're lucky enough to have here um, in the United States. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Oh, the whole. It's amazing. Is it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and they and they the difference is in in these these third world countries, as pastors have told me, they said uh, they, they call me David. Uh, David, um, we need Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit of every second of every minute of every day, just to survive. Yeah. You Americans may need to call 911 to God once a month, once every six months, or whatever it is. And that's such a good point. They have to rely on him every second of every minute so they know him. They're more intimate. And they wouldn't trade it for anything. They wouldn't trade it. They wouldn't trade places with us. No, they wouldn't. Um, you know, and going back to the uh, color barrier issue, um, we'll just call it, I, that's obviously a big issue in the world today. Right. Um, you've got the Black Lives Matter, and um, there is no color in God's world. I mean, if we were all blind, we wouldn't know who is what color. Right. So, you know, close your eyes and, you know, who's the person next to you? Are they a good person? Do they have a good heart? Do they treat others with kindness and compassion and love? I don't care what color you are. If you're a good person and you do good, um, you know, that's sign me up. I want to be your friend. Um, I, I do not judge. I have people of every color, every race, every ethnicity. I mean, whatever I, I, I love everyone equally. Um, I have always 
had that love in my heart. Um, so I have a really hard time with uh, everything that's going on in the world. It's it's absolutely wrong um, how you know the black culture has been treated. Um, I agree one hundred percent that they are severely mistreated. I mean, how I think about slavery, and it's like how could we have done that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's awful. Um, but what I don't like is the whole black lives matter, which yes, black lives do matter. Right. They absolutely do. Um, but these people out here that are saying their black lives matter, they don't care about black lives. They care about burning things down. They, they are right. not on the right mission. There's a thing called a peaceful protest that's fine. These people are not peacefully protesting. They are causing problems. They're actually causing more problems for black lives. Um, so you have to really look at what's going on in the world. And I, I stand up for black people everywhere. I love them. Uh, people at Heroes Camp, people, you know, at my church in Compton, I love them. Like they're my family. I will kiss them, hug them. Um, I, more love to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and even they will say what's going on with Black Lives Matter right now is not right because your people are not doing it for the right reasons. Um, you know, and that's what's upsetting uh, is, you know, they're starting this whole movement and it's for the wrong purpose. Right. And, you know, if I get haters hating me for saying that, I'm sorry, I'm speaking the truth. And I have Black people who will agree with me on right. that. Well, um, most what of people them are will. doing. Yeah. And it's like what they're doing, like burning down buildings, vandalizing, killing people. That's not right. Nobody right. agrees with that. Um, and you know what? Blue lives matter. That's Sorry right. if you hate me for that one. Um, the majority of police officers are good. I know a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And what has happened in the past and, um, you know, what they did to George Floyd and everyone else, you know, that has been wrongly, brutally murdered wrongfully, those police officers need to pay dearly. What they did was absolutely wrong, inexcusable. Um, but you cannot categorize every police officer uh, as that, because they are not. Right. Um, and I, I stand up for black lives. I stand up for blue lives. I stand up for all lives. Um, you know, and that's not saying like, oh, you don't care about black people. You, I do. I care about everybody. Right. Um, which means all lives matter. Right. So because you know, God that's made my us on that. in the in the Torah, God made us in the image of Almighty God. That means all of us are in His image. Yeah. And God does not make mistakes. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It's the condition of your heart that matters. Correct. And is it yep. for him or is that against him? That's the choice in life. We're yep. here to choose. If just love everybody, the greatest of all is love. Just if yeah. we all loved each other, we couldn't possibly do the things to each other that are going on in the world today. If you love someone, you wouldn't do that. And so, that's what Satan fears. He fears the love because he, he knows the love of the Father. And he knows the love of the Son, and he knows the love of the Holy Spirit. And uh, yeah. if you can combine the love with the, with the Trinity, the unconditional love, nothing, nothing can stop you. Yeah. I'm just going to keep loving and, and spreading my light wherever I can. So that's, that's my are. job. We're, 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 to shed that, we're, we're to shed that light. Do you wanna, do, would you like to close us in, in, a, in a prayer? Sure. Um, for I, I guess I do want to... Um, there's a few people specifically, and I'll, I'll mention them in the prayer. Um, but my dear friend, uh, I told her she was, she's watching today. Her name is Becky Bontrager. Hi, Becky. And, uh, her husband Kent has been going through some, uh, severe medical issues and she has been. So, um, these are people who I, they're my family. Amen. I love them. We'll have um, our prayer warriors friend. pray too. Yeah. So any prayer warriors out there, please pray for Kent Bontrager and Becky Bontrager. Um, I'll pray for them too right now, but on your own, um, you know, please definitely pray for them. Uh, and I have to give a shout out to my good friend, Dr. Jesse Say, because it's his birthday today. He's watching too. So if you're watching, happy birthday. Um, wonderful. Uh, loves the Lord. Um, amazing doctor. So I just, sorry. Had happy to birthday, that. doctor. <laughs> happy birthday, doctor. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll close us in prayer Amen. and thank you again for having me. Um, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much right now for this opportunity uh, to be on his glory, which is for your glory. Um, I am humbled, I am grateful, and I hope that you spoke through me today and whoever needed to hear whatever words came out of my mouth, um, 
that glory goes to you, Lord. I am just a vessel. I am here for you to work through, um, shine your light through, speak through. Uh, I am your hands. I am your mouth. I am everything, Lord, that you want me to be uh, for your glory. So I just pray for Pastor David and uh, his show and the Bible studies that he has. Um, continue to bless him and bring him guests and people that will uh, just shine some positivity and light and love and share your glory also. Um, allow him, uh, Lord, to continue this program, continue the Bible studies and everything that he's doing because it is a blessing to so many people, not only in this country, but around the world. So I just ask that um, you have favor on him and his ministry. And uh, again, I'm just grateful for uh, him listening to the Holy Spirit and connecting us. Uh, and Lord, I, I just, I lift up Kent and Becky to you right now. I pray that your healing hands are on them and that uh, you just take control over that situation and um, give them peace and comfort and healing that they need. Um, I pray for Heroes Camp, Lord, that, that you bless every child that walks through that door and you help them grow into incredible human beings who do not have to be a, a victim of their circumstances. And I pray for um, people to come and, and help Heroes Camp however they can, whether it's volunteering, whether it's donations, whether it's just supporting them in a loving way, Lord. I just pray for Pat and BJ Magley and the whole ministry there. Um, they are doing incredible things for you, for your glory, Lord. Uh, so I lift them up to you right now that you have favor on them and their ministry. And Lord, I just pray for peace in the world right now. There is so much hatred and anger and hurt and pain and suffering. I pray that you start shining your light so bright through everyone in the world that just beacons of light are everywhere. And for a moment, the people that are in darkness, the people that are hurting, the people that are in pain, see this light and wonder what it is. And they stop what they're doing and they put down their weapons and they put down their hate and they put down their anger and they see you for just a moment that draws them to you and makes them want to stop what they're doing. I pray for truth. I pray for people to open their eyes to what's happening in the world and to see it for what it is. And for people who are involved in anything um, that is not of you, Lord, that is not of light, that is not of love to just stop and back down and bring more peace into the world, bring more peacemakers into the world. Lord, I pray for our president, President Trump. Um, he has so many haters and people against him right now. We need to build him up stronger than ever. He is the leader of this country, whether people like it or not. And we need to pray for him and we need to love him and we need to support him. Whether you like his personality, what comes out of his mouth, it doesn't matter. He is leading this country. So Lord, I just ask that you lead him, you guide him. You bring people into his life that will instruct him on what to do and humble him, Lord, and make him have more compassion and kindness when he needs to. But let him run this country the way you would run it. And I pray for his family, for um, Melania, his wife, uh, for his son, Baron. Protect them, Lord. Protect that family. Protect everything that they're doing. Um, I lift up the police departments everywhere, Lord. Uh, I pray that you protect them. They are under attack. They are under fire. And I just pray that people rise up and they want their police in the community. They welcome them back with open arms and they see that there's a need for them and protect them every day because awful, awful things are happening um, to them. And uh, and I pray for all the black lives out there, for the people who are who are black and they're hurting and they're angry and they want change. Lord, give them the change that that is much needed in the world, um, and let them see that this needs to be peaceful and that change will happen and that you do love them and that they are important and they are worthy and they are wonderful and they are incredible and they are so loved, Lord. Let them feel that instead of the hateful feelings that they're feeling right now and the anger that they're feeling right now. Um, and I just lift up Craig Sawyer, Lord, to you um, and uh, uh, Vets for Child Rescue, Lord. I. I ask that you put a hedge of protection around him and his whole entire group of people that go in and they stop these horrific things happening to these children. Protect the children, Lord. Um, protect Craig, protect his group, protect um, 
Vets for Child Rescue um, every single day, protect their lives, protect their minds, protect what they see, allow more people to come forward and support them and help them. Um, and anyone, Lord, that's that's here for a worthy cause, these warriors that are so strong that they are taking a stand for what is right, I pray that you send legions of angels to protect them and you send warriors to help them along the way. And any corruption and any evil that's in the Lord right in the world right now, Lord, I just I ask that you stop it, that your mighty fist pounds down on them and you stop them in their tracks. This needs to stop. People need to stop abusing and hating and killing and murdering. Um, Lord, I pray that you send out your wrath on them right now. If they are never going to stop and they are pure evil and um, their mission in life is to destroy people, I, I ask that you have your way with them, whether that be to remove them and what they're doing or whether that means to soften their heart and to show them love and to show them compassion just like Saul turned into Paul, um, that can happen, Lord, and it can happen, and we've seen it happen, and we know that it happens. So if that's uh, what you would like to do, then I pray that you touch the lives and hearts of anyone who's about to do evil or who sees evil, and you turn them around with love and kindness, which is what we all should be doing. Um, and Lord, I, I, I pray that for everyone listening right now and praying right now that you put more compassion in their hearts, more love in their hearts, more light in their life, um, because we need that now more than ever. And Lord, if this new Hollywood is coming and uh, it needs to happen and you want us to tell more positive stories that shine light on you and bring your glory to the world, then I ask that you orchestrate that to happen right now through this program, through people talking about it, through um, groups coming together, through phone calls, whatever needs to take place. Let's create a new Hollywood because the old one is gone and needs to be gone. The old ways are done with. Um, it's time for new ways and it's time for new light and it's time for people to see you, Lord, as you are, which is nothing but love and light. Um, and I just thank you once again for this beautiful time uh, on his glory. And I thank you for Pastor Dave um, and for this, for this incredible opportunity that you have given to me today. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Powerful, powerful, powerful. In Jesus' name. Light wins, light wins, light wins. We know the Bible. We know how it finishes. Uh, as the Apostle Paul says now, though, we have to finish the race. We have to yes, finish the race together. So thank you so much, Lisa, for coming on. Um, I think that sparked uh, some, some people that I know that we can band together and create this new Hollywood because uh, I know there's a lot of other like, I don't want to say like minds, I want to say like hearts of Christ that want to do the same thing. And it's time Love for it. us to unify as one body with Christ the head so we can get that done. So Sounds Lisa, good. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. Uh, never did I think I'd be in the middle of it, but you never know. Here yeah, here you we are. You never know. Yeah, yep. so God bless you. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. We'll talk soon, and I'm sure we're going to have you on again real soon. Thank you. Thank All you right. for having me. All right. God bless you. God bless you too. Welcome to His Glory Nation, where we bring you the word of His glory. We do it through our His Glory Creed. Number one, the Bible is the literal and infallible word of God. Number two, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Number three, we're led by the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Number four, we have the Father's heart for the lost, the poor, the elderly, the widow, and the orphans. Number five, we're here to serve him in ministry. Number six, in everything we do, we glorify our Lord. It is our love for him that compels us. And number seven, the five-fold ministry. According to Ephesians 4, 9, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. Visit us today at www.hisglory.me.